And then he says, uh, that, um, he said that the dog was not blameworthy because of its form. It's blameworthy because of its aggressive nature. You know, obviously, and, and the, the, I'll, I'll just mention this here because uh, the Arab, the Saluk, the Arabs of the desert had dogs, and the Prophet permitted that. And he also, it's, it's permissible, according to the fuqaha, to have a dog as a guard dog in your house. If you live in places where there's a lot of crime or uh, there's fear, then it's permissible to have a dog. But, um, and then dog people like shepherds and things like that. We went to a house the other day, they had sheep, and they had these amazing um, uh, Turkish uh, dog, sheep dog. So a dog is actually a beautiful animal. It's a creature of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted uh, consuming the food of dogs that they, ca- they ca- capture. So if a dog kills, if it's a mu'allam, that's why. In fact, that's one of the arguments. They say even the dog that is given the knowledge of how to hunt uh, is elevated in the Qur'an. That's how precious knowledge is. So even the dog that has knowledge gets elevated in the Qur'an. We also know the dog of the Ashab al-Kahf is honored in the Qur'an. Uh, and there's, in the tafsirs, they say it's an uh, animal of paradise. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of very a lot of cruelty to dogs in the Muslim world, which is unfortunate. There were there were dogs that were uh, very very vicious in Mecca, and they had kalab, they had rabies. They used to come down from the mountains, and and the, many of the hadiths referred to those dogs specifically. Um, and the, the, but the Prophet did not like dogs in the house, but we know that Aisha had a puppy dog in the house. And that's when he was told that the dog should be kept outside. So even in the house of the Prophet, there was a puppy dog. Um, so this, the Prophet treated animals very well. Uh, he, he did not have any cruelty towards animals. He respected animals as signs of God. Even the pig, according to the Maliki Madhab, is, is, is tahir. It's not considered najis. Imam Malik doesn't consider uh, the dog or the pig najis. Um, so uh, different cultures have, in Turkey, the, the, they're a traditionally a nomadic people, and so they, they were a dog people, because nomads always have dogs. My own teacher, Marab Tarhaj, there was a dog in the encampment, and he used to feed it from his left hand at dinner time. He'd literally put couscous in his hand, and he would feed the dog. I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, and he told me, when he was doing that once, he said, every living thing, there's a reward in, in uh in feeding it or treating it kindly, every living thing. So this contempt that people have for animals is really something I feel needs to be eradicated because I think one of the signs of sociopathy is the ability to torture animals. And I know, I know one Muslim country uh, that I lived in, uh, one of the things that uh, kids would do when they'd get their driver's license for fun would, would to go and run over cats as a, as a, as a fun thing to do. Uh, which is a very, very sick uh, society that could produce uh, people like that. So, uh, you know, and, and torturers, you know how they train them, don't you? Right? Torturing animals. That's how the Americans train torturers in South America and Central America, um, they, to torture animals first. Because if you can torture animals, what do you, why do you think at medical school, right, they work dentistry? Where do they do it on dogs and things like that, right? Get them used to torturing dogs. That's what, right? <laughs> you can do it. So he says, if your heart's filled with anger, 